This week, episode 333 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I interview Andy Yaffe from, he's the national sales director for McAuliffe Cigars. Jason Fouget jumps in. He's a VP for Monapsis and a Stogie Geek. We will have for you cigar news and stuff you might need to know. But before we get to that, it's a cigar news. Right now, currently as we speak, uh, serial entrepreneur Mike Bellity is golfing Harbor Links. Hope he keeps them straight. The industry gets excited about labels. Hope yes. they keep that straight. Joe Hosempa was right about PCA, even though he's never been to a damn show. Boy, this is going to be one hell of an episode. Episode 333 of Stogie Geek starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 333 of Stogie Geeks. I am your... Almost permanent host, Joe Hosempa. Mr. Azadorian was not available to join us in studio today. Uh, however, we do have a, a couple of guests, and we got a great panel going on. I'm excited to introduce not only is he the little dark haired kid from Texas who everybody is talking about, we might not talk that much about Sticks of the Week, but Drew has a new tinker toy in the cigar industry <laughs> that he wants to talk about. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get into that. Uh, if you follow us on Facebook, then you uh, already have a clue what device we're going to talk about. Um, sure. I don't know. I think he's been watching too much of the International Space Station and, and stuff like that. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're going to get Andy's opinion on that, uh, who, who is the National Sales Director for McAuliffe Cigars. And we are going to get Jason's uh, opinion on uh, Drew's little Mr. Wizard science project. Yes, I said Mr. Wizard. That puts me over <laughs> 45, I know. But anyway, before we get start the show, I got to do intros. So it is with further ado, I introduced little Doc Kid from Texas. Drew, what up? Hey, what's going on, Joe? You know, how's it? Simple unorganization before a show, which leads to the show. It's awesome. Right? Right? I couldn't. I could Yeah. So for those of you who are listening, we, I could not get my computer to sign on in my new office because they have all these. Uh, I, I, they're supposed to put me on uh, Cat 6 cable somewhere so I can hook up, but. They haven't done so. So here we are. But anyhow, uh, no, it's nice and hot over here in Texas. We're hit, we're in the uh, century mark and above. Uh, feels like about 110, though. So we're cooking out here and, uh, you know, just kind of watching the, the Dak Prescott, you know, news break on the uh, mm. on his contract and all that other good stuff with the NFL. Uh, but other than that, man, the last two weeks been getting some rest. Uh, had a little COVID scaring the family, as you know, but uh, we got that taken care of real quick. Uh, whiskey and cigars, I'll tell you. That'll and, knock out anything. And so much <laughs> so much for uh, COVID. Uh, I'm sorry, so much for heat killing COVID, right? 
It's all right. it's all rampant in that freaking sun belt. But who am I? I'm not a scientist. Anyway, sure. you and our guest have something in common. I believe it's those cowboys. According to the bio, I want to introduce the national sales director, former Caliph Cigars, Mr. Andy Yaffe. What's up? Hey, everything's going good. I'm coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, thanks for having me on, Joe. I, you know, Drew, I know we're going to talk about cigars, but you just struck my interest. What, what are you talking about, Dak Prescott contract? What? Did something just come well, through? I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're just know. talking about, yeah, they're talking about his franchise tag. If he's going to play with that for the, for the season. And then, you know, by the 15th, they want to get him pretty much wrapped up for the remainder of his career, I guess. I don't know. They're, you know, once Mahomes came out with that half a bill. In- Uh-oh. Oh, we lost Drew. Texas Internet. We'll come back to Drew. We have Mr. Jason <laughs> Fouge. He was the VP at a cybersecurity company called Onapsis and a Stogie Geek as well. From his journey with Security Weekly, we had found out that he is really into uh, cigars and whiskey and barbecue. And I'm like, you're going to fit right in. And such, in fact, that when we just launched the show, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get some whiskey and I'm drinking this. And he corrected me on the name. So you are p- prone to be perfect <laughs> because if anybody doesn't know how, if anybody mispronounces freaking Abraparaca and freaking cigar names and all that stuff, it is me. It, it is nice. me. So uh, I'm glad I have you here to, to help me out. Um, but anyway, welcome to Stogie Geeks. Thanks. I'm so glad to be here. This is going to be a good time. I am enjoying a whistle pig, a 12 year old whistle pig, mm. uh, oh, and a yeah. wonderful cigar, also in Texas. And it is really hot, as I said earlier. I'm basking in the heat. I have my little portable fan. Nice. Keep me, uh, keep me cool. <laughs> nice. uh, is that USB been, charged, uh, been... like for USB? Is that is that like a USB? Yeah, exactly. Fan? Nice, <laughs> nice. For those of you Stogie geeks who are, we're gonna throw out a lot of computer stuff on this episode too, and maybe some future ones. So super cool. But yeah, so if you don't know what USB is, uh, email Drew at StogieGeeks.com, <laughs> and when he can't check his email because he's having computer problems, uh, he'll get back to you in two weeks and with the description of that. Anyway, uh, Andy, I didn't want to interrupt the the Prescott conversation you and drew are having yeah, so yeah. so so please please continue that so they, yeah so so by july 15th i guess they're they're trying to wrap him up for the for the remainder of his career to see what you know what kind of dollars that's going to end up being but ever since that patrick mahone's contract came out yeah they're 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 jones the joneses are jonesy <laughs> to get this guy wrapped up but we'll see yeah, they should have they should have done it years ago honestly they should have did it before ezekiel Elliott's contract for sure and but they didn't so but here we are and uh yeah they're gonna feel the pains uh of paying them per year if uh they don't get something wrapped up by the 15th i think that's the deadline uh from all the sports uh people here in dallas so we'll figure we'll see is that an exciting thing it is (laughs) because i'll tell you i'll tell you by the way Make sure you send all of your hate email to Drew at StogieGeeks.com. As a Yankee fan, okay, (laughs) the Cowboys are my second choice who also, like the Yankees, hold on to history when it comes to victory. That's all. You know what I mean? Like I'm just <laughs> the Yan- the Yankees have not won a freaking World Series since 2009, and yet freaking you know f- baseball franchises one of the popular watch there. Cowboys, same thing. In fact, even over the Patriots, right? Yeah. Where, where the Cowboys Absolutely. have been over over there be- before, as far as fan loyalty, fan base, and there's a lot of fans up there in the Northeast, you know, for, uh, or up up here in the Northeast. For sure. So Amer- America's know. team for a reason. <laughs> the Amer- well, yeah, yeah, sure. I I get it. You know, so awesome, super cool. I'm, I'm I'm working on becoming a fan. I used to uh I used to live in Kansas City. I'm a Chiefs fan. They built that into me, and I've lived in Texas yeah. here for I don't know almost ten years, and I'm working on becoming a Cowboys fan because you're not allowed to be any other kind of fan if you live here. So yeah. I'm uh, I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> but good, you know, go Chiefs, right? They they rocked it last year, so. Well, I yeah. think you, I was well. you and Drew should hook up because Drew knows some some of the some of the the, the entrance ways in, in into that stadium as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Or Andy gotta, is I, a season ticket keep. holder from his bio. Yeah, I'm a season ticket holder. He's a holder. season ticket holder, so out. you know, if he's not out there, you know, taking some of the McAuliffe retailers who are cowboy fans, maybe he's got room for you guys. 
There you go. You know? Nice. You never know. You never know, right? Awesome, awesome. But <laughs> I do want to kick off today's interview, and I want to give Andy a chance to talk about his position as National Sales Director for McAuliffe Cigars. Uh, for you story geeks who are watching and listening uh, there at McAuliffe Cigars, they're, they're relatively new to the scene. You know, they're about four, four years new to the scene uh, there. And they've made such a movement in the past two years that I wanted to give Andy a chance to elaborate on that. Uh, they have an extremely active uh, social media presence and cadence of um, videos and interviews from various people within the industry. And then I want to talk to him, uh, uh, have him explain the the relationship between, um, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Al McAuliffe and the Gomez family and, you know, wh where the sticks come from, where they are, maybe some of the, the, um, the uh, popular sticks that, uh, someone who doesn't really know about McAuliffe cigars or kind of heard of them, but but really haven't gotten into their portfolio. If you could break it down for us, uh, that would be super cool. So welcome to the show. Thank welcome. you, Joe, for having me. Mm. Um, so where where do we start? I mean, I it's, national sales director of McAuliffe. I, I, I mean, I have questions. Of... If you want, I mean, like what, yeah. what what's what's well, you're, you're, okay, like you just you just said five topics there. I'm like, well, which one do you want to go with? Welcome to the show. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Hey, where, where, where do we jump in? Drew Drew actually <laughs> writes them down, and, and and Drew keeps me in line. And sometimes I forget things, and and, and I produce a box in my ear. Like you really yeah. wanted to talk about that because you've been talking about it. Because you know I've been talking about it all week. I got to talk about story, story geeks, story geeks, and then I just you know. I'm very scatterbrained, if you haven't noticed, but it's cool. It works. <laughs> I noticed before I we went on air. Yeah, it works. It works. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually calmer on air than I am off. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah, I was gonna. I'll tell you. I was gonna go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Aunt, Mr. Andy. I was just gonna sorry. give you guys a little background on me, real quick, before Please. we dive into. McAuliffe. I was gonna go there. I was gonna say, give me your background. How you walked into McAuliffe Cigars? What the culture was like at McAuliffe Cigars? There you go. And then. Where where you guys are going? Gotcha. I got gotcha. it down to three, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to do. <laughs> so you know, uh, way back background. I'm from Orlando, Florida. I grew up in Florida. Graduated from University of Central Florida. Um, always been a cigar smoker from when I turned 18. Uh, my best friend was a he he had he his parents were or his father and his grandfather were heavy, heavy cigar smokers. So he wanted to try it out. I was like, let's go ahead, give it a whirl. And I fell in love with cigars from day one on my 18th birthday, actually. Um, I did not get actually into the cigar business until about seven years ago. I got in with La Florida Minicana as a sales rep in the Texas market. And about two years ago, I left that, went over to uh, Nashville, uh, chase an opportunity for uh, for my wife, and we moved to Nashville, Tennessee. Did a brief stint with Nat Sherman Cigars. And then after Nat Sherman Cigars, actually got out of the industry for a little bit. And I had a relationship with, uh, with Al McAuliffe and the McAuliffe brand uh, that I had created in Texas before I left. Uh, they came calling, and last year in January, I accepted a job with McAuliffe Cigars as a Southeast Regional uh, Territory Manager. And then throughout the year, just kept growing this region down here and was presented with the opportunity to become the you know National Sales Director for McAuliffe Cigars starting this year and kind of create my own team uh, and really, really push the McAuliffe brand, not only in my own region, but the whole the whole United States. So uh, like you said, McAuliffe Cigars, uh, one thing that attracted me to them in the very beginning uh, was the fact that Al and the powers to be, uh, Dan Thompson uh, and Amanda, I know Dan was on this show not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I always treasured was the fact that they valued the opinion of their reps. Um, you know, Dan didn't come from the tobacco industry. He came from the high tech industry when he came in here. So he had a lot to learn about how this industry works. And as you guys know, it's much different than any other industry I've ever come into uh, contact with or work for. So 
uh, they were always big on valuing the opinions of their staff and their sales guys. I, I'd never worked for a company uh, that kind of did that as much as they did. And it really made me really made me feel important and accepted with the McAuliffe cigar family. And that was a culture that was created. You alluded to what is the McAuliffe culture like for us working for them? Mm. Um, it's always like, what do you think? What, what are your thoughts on this? And it's not just, oh, okay, thanks for that thought. It's like, okay, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and, and like put it into, you know, into the works. Like right now we have that passport program. That was the idea of one of our sales guys. Mm -hmm. So, and now it's a national program that we're really getting behind. So that's just, that's just a small example of, of the culture behind the scenes. But I really liked that. I really enjoyed that. I felt like I had a voice. I felt like I had, this was before I got promoted. I felt like I was valued as an employee of the McAuliffe cigar family. And, you know, I just embraced that and wanted to grow with it and wanted to get behind it. And sure enough, I got promoted this year and now I'm getting some other, you know, we're growing a sales team. Um, we're still looking for a couple, couple more guys, but we've had a couple hires this year and they're like, Whoa, uh, they've come from other companies in the industry as well. They're like, Whoa, you actually care about what I think? Mm. Like, that's kind of crazy. So, I mean, that, that's, that's just great. It helps, it helps with, um, employee loyalty. It helps with motivation to go out there and move the product and sell it and tell the story and, and this and that. So that's one thing I've always loved about working for McAuliffe, but um, yeah, it, it's still a brand new uh, cigar brand in the market as much as I'm, as much as I think it sh is concerned. Uh, it, it's only four and a half years old. Uh, the McAuliffe company started in January of 2015, I believe that if the math is right there. Um, so four and a half years old and we've already got a decent market share out mm -hmm. there in the in the market so i think that's impressive that we've been able to come this way in such a short amount of time and you alluded to the ambassador group um that was a great that was that's been awesome for us if you guys are not familiar with what the ambassador group is uh it's our social media presence it's our you know for lack of a better way to say it like our you know our, our loyalty club you know our, our consumer club that they can get into and really get behind the brand. Uh, they get first first information about anything McAuliffe. We've created a community on Facebook that's 2,000 members deep, and everybody in there is just, they're becoming friends with each other. They, they send each other cigars, they bomb each other. It's, it's really, really cool. It's like a little cool ecosystem that these guys just feel, feel important because we touch base with them. I'm not even gonna meet half these people and yet I have a good relationship with them through, through Facebook. And it's just, it's kind of crazy. So, you know, I, before I go any deeper, yep. is, in my touch, is there anything you want to ask that I touched on? Or? Ask? No, I, I just, I just have commentary, uh, there. So, um, you know, you, you mentioned, you mentioned the ambassador program, uh, usually every show, if I can remember it and Johnny box in my ear, which is most of them. I, I I'm like batting, I'm batting like, you know, th at least 400 on this. Right. <laughs> I always tell the story geeks, if you want to get engaged with, with the ambassador program, you go to sto uh, st uh, stogiegeeks.com, click on the ambassador logo, ask you a couple questions, you sign up and then you end up, you know, you, you, you have a bunch of benefits. You'll be able to get into a private Facebook group that Andy was talking about. More importantly on the program, um, I had the luxury to speak to your marketing, Amanda McAuliffe, right? Uh, before that, M that McAuliffe came on to uh, St uh, Stogie Geeks. And she was telling me about the Ambassador program. And I said to her, I says, you know, I believe off the top of my head to, to, to give everyone a time frame. This is probably October or November of, of last year. I says, you know, I used to be in that an ambassador for Altidus, right? Um, way back in the day, right? And when they had an ambassador program, keep in mind, conceptually, we had a 56K modem, right? So that, that, was the, that, that was when it was. So the internet was nothing what it is now, right? There's no Facebook, you know, it, you know, Facebook was only used for college kids who had a college EDU email and all of that stuff. 
uh, there, but there were forums and there were online forums and it was a great place for us to chat. And, and I was, was, was upset and uh, uh, upset at the industry back when I jumped on Stogie Geeks here, uh, January of 2017, how many cigar companies have done away with the ambassador program. They've, but they, they've done away with, with their ambassador program. And I have the luxury to meet with, with a bunch of people, mm -hmm. either via Stogie Geeks or off air, and they give me reasons why. But one of the things that I want to add to commentary as to what's different from your ambassador program is your ambassador program is basically whatever the ambassador wants to put into it. So in other words, you know, you send out your Facebook, here's our schedule, here's who we're going to be interviewing, this is our, this is our event we're going to be doing. And if you want to participate, it's there for you. As opposed to when I was an ambassador, it was, hey man, Here's this bag of freaking 20 sticks and go find freaking two shops that want to get them in that are new and we'll ship you a box of cigars. <laughs> because there was no online forum. So I was like, you know, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll stop by a shop, give it to you. Oh, you a rep? Because you got to keep in mind in that day, you know, this is going like, like, like 99, 2000. In that day, they weren't, the cigar industry was really different. And I know that because it, uh, because just before those years is when I owned a cigar shop here in the Providence Metro. So, you know, we didn't have reps banging on our door and whatnot. Like, they sent us a catalog. Remember, was, we're still on 56K modem, right? They sent us a catalog. We called, gave them a credit card. They shipped freaking whatever. There were yeah. some pain in the ass vendors that were really pain in the ass to deal with, like Arturo Fluente. Yeah, you want 45 boxes? Well, you're going to pay for all 45, and we're going to ship you 20. And, you know, and I'd be like, oh, great. Like, oh. You, know, you know what I mean? But, but it was a different time and a different day than all these sales reps. So now when a McAuliffe Cigars comes up and gives you the opportunity to be a national sales manager, like it's the real deal. It, it's, it's, it's boots on the ground for your reps that are out there you don't have any brokers right every, every, everyone's in house yeah cur okay. currently yep. okay yeah. yep so everybody's in house so so you have a managed system which controls the brand and all of that and what i was shocked is a lot of these cigar companies now fast forward and i'm almost done with my thought now fast forward they've started like this cigar influencer program and i want to make the distinction to the Stogie Geeks to give your program justice to what it is. It's not a cigar influencer program where right. you, you, you take a picture, pictures of McAuliffe cigars and you go and, 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 and you're trying to influence people to go to the brick and mortar and ask for McAuliffe. There's a real educational component that I want to encourage the Stogie Geek listener to go to stogiegeeks.com, click on that McAuliffe logo. It's right on the front page. Sign up to become an ambassador. And from there, like you will get education. And what I think is yeah. super cool about your group is that you interview people outside of McAuliffe as well. And, and, yeah. and this industry doesn't do that enough. Here comes the hate email and here comes the, oh, yeah. here comes the, the podcast competition who says that kid just doesn't shut up about the industry. And I get it. <laughs> and that's cool. And by the way, if you want to come back on the show, you have an open mic. You know my email. right? So I, I really think that you know you guys are really set for growth even though you you've been you've been there calendar wise for four years you've been really really active boots on the ground for for, for two i mean four years you gotta remember you mentioned nat sherman you mentioned la florida dominicana you didn't have an 80 year head start with history and heritage and all that stuff you guys gotta really go out there so hats hats off to you guys for um ignoring what other uh, vendors are doing and doing your own thing. I think that's super cool. And I truly mm -hmm. mean that. So the ambassador group started actually right before I came on board. And at the very beginning, it was, it was a cool thought, you know, it was one of the reasons why I decided to come work for the company. Cause I was like, okay, this is cool. We're giving our consumers the ability to feel special about our brand, it feels special for smoking it, feels special for being a part of it. However, it was very cloudy on 
what actual benefits they were getting for it. And to this day, I still will do events where these guys, you know, we have, you know, one of the perks about being an ambassador is you get one of these cool little challenge coins. Mm -hmm. I should have brought mine in here to show you, but yeah. Um, and they're individually numbered. Yep. So that number is attached to you in our system and, and what have you. And we've actually had three different types of ambassador coins. The first one was just black. It had Macau cigars on there. It didn't have the crest. It didn't have a logo on there. And that was for the first 500 ambassadors that we had. Uh, that's mm -hmm. an example of the one I have. Uh, then the next 500, we had it with the yellow colored crest of the McAuliffe crest. And then after the 1,000 member, it's now with the red McAuliffe crest. And we'll probably change it again because we're going through a little bit of rebranding with our logo. But I still have to this day these guys that show up with the black ones at my events and they're like, where's my free cigar? So like you were saying, you know, with Altidus back in the day, they're like, oh, you open up this, an account or whatever, we'll send you a free box or yeah, what yeah, have you. Yeah. Um, th these guys would come up and I've had some of them get rather upset with me for being like, well, that's not what this is about. We're not about, you know, giving you a coin and giving out free product. If we did that and we get to 10,000 members, that's a lot of cigars we're giving away. We're not going to make it as a company. Um, so it was more, you know, there was a lot of muddy, cloudy definition of what we're actually doing. And it wasn't until, you know, Dan and Amanda came on board that we were really able to define and portray to our ambassadors what the point of the program was. And the point of the program was for these ambassadors to feel part of the McAuliffe family. And we're going to involve them in different things that we're doing. They're going to get first tips on news. We're going to provide a community that they can connect with other cigar smokers, um, become friends with them, see different things that are going on. And we're going to provide them uh, – an education, like you said, system mm -hmm. where we're going to talk about other people's cigars. You know, that was something we started during the coronavirus situation. We started bringing other manufacturer representatives onto our shows and talking about the cigars and this and that, because, you know, I'm not stupid. I, I wouldn't think that there, that anybody just smokes one cigar. Most people smoke other brands. I smoke other brands. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I'm not afraid to say that. And I know most of my ambassadors smoke other brands. They even post pictures of it on there. And we encourage you to, as long as it's cigar related um, and you're not bashing something, go ahead and, you know, go ahead and tell us what you like to smoke. So it, we've done, you know, that once we really defined what the ambassador group was, it just went from there and grew like crazy, like wildfire overnight. And like you said, we're about, uh, we're about 5,000 ambassadors deep. Now, not every one of them, plays on Facebook or uses Facebook. So about we're probably translating about 50% of that into our Facebook group. And the Facebook group gives us the opportunity to really interact with them. And I'm talking not just like on a weekly basis or what have you, or a monthly basis. We're interacting with these ambassadors every day. I was, uh, Dan I, goes I, on I would there. say every, I every hour, there. like every, every hour, hour. Every, yeah. if, if, every hour, if you, 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 have new activity on that group and and yeah. and i'm believe me i've i get invited for other groups and whatnot and i'm like wow they they, they got something special here when i spoke to dan offline and, and i spoke to amanda i'm like you guys really are active because i've seen other groups and yeah. drew's a member of other groups and all of that stuff and 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 we wanted to do a segment at some point of of different facebook groups and all sure. that there, but you guys, you guys yeah. are just just active, and 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 the knowledge is shared, which it's 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 unheard of in the industry. Like I I I'll go as far as say that I will sit up, at, uh, I'll speak to the president of whoever replaces the PCA, and everybody goes to the new show, the ABC. I'm making that up, people. Right? We don't need Sagan news. Right? <laughs> ABC is a new show in Vegas. Right? Right? I think it should be called. The, the 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 Joho Zempa forum, but anyway, um, you know, uh, I I think all kidding aside, like you know, when when you when you look at the activity, like you guys want to share the knowledge, and the, and there's not a lot of companies that are like that. I can tell you no. from sales reps activity, 
I can tell you from national sales director activity, they kind of keep it within. And and the, and and, the, and 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 I just want to encourage the, the the story geek listener to 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 get involved in that because they well, will it's be crazy. Impressed. Yeah, when we were doing some of those interviews with other people in the industry, you, were, you mentioned Mike Bellady. Yeah. Uh, golfing, and I think he's in Savannah or something. He is um, actually, at, as we speak, at Harbor Links. Now, I go to Hilton okay. Head every year, except for this year. Two weeks ago, I just pulled the plug, right? Yeah. Uh, I pulled the plug because, I mean, I live in Bristol, Rhode Island. It's a freaking water town. It's gorgeous. And Hilton Head is just as gorgeous in August, and we go every year in August. But, you know, to go and wear a mask and take out food, like the same as here, with COVID, it's just not worth it. Yeah, it's like pointless. Yeah. So right. he came on our show, and I mean, he was like, "Man, this is great! Like, I am literally talking to the consumers of another manufacturer about my brand. Like, who does that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's like we're, we're showcasing you. Like, when when he, when these guys would come on, you know, we would tell them ahead of time, this." hour and a half or two hours, whatever it might be, we are showcasing you. Yep. Now, yes, we might be talking to our ambassadors here and there and comparing things that you're doing to what we're doing, but we are showcasing your brand. You know, it was always a question of, hey, we had a segment. Tell us about your brand. Tell us about your Vitolas that you offer. Tell us about your blends that you offer. Tell us about different things that you are doing with your with your brand right now for our ambassadors. And it's crazy. Another cool thing that we always try to do is we would always try to smoke their cigars while we're doing their show. So like when Bellity was on, we were smoking MLB. When, when uh, Terrence was on uh, with Agonorsa, Agonorsa, we were smoking yep. Agonorsa leaf. Yep. So, you know, it wasn't, we weren't hiding anything. We're, we're, right. we're, we're, we're true to ourselves and we're true to our ambassadors and we're, we want to be true to other manufacturers um, and show them that like, Hey, a we're in this for the long run and B we want to all work together. We're all fighting regulations together mm -hmm. at the same time. What's the point in fighting them all separately? Like let's, let's all get together and make, make something happen with this industry. And, and uh, you know, that's one of the reasons I love the industry, the, the relationships that are made. So, and you know, that's, that's the way I, that's the way I see it. Like for instance, like, with the guys I just mentioned, if I'm going to go into a store and I see that they carry Agonor Salif, I'm going to be like, hey, that, you know, Agonor Salif, that Terrence guy, he really cool. He came on our show. We had a great conversation. And I would think yeah. that if he went into a store and saw Macau, if he'd probably say the same thing. Like, yeah, it's I mean, that was our goal with it, like getting getting people to to recognize that, you know, we're not in this to be selfish. We're in this to. To, to be part of the family and help each other out. Right. These are the principles that I think that we're all saying, and I want to give Jason and Drew a chance, so I'll be 30 seconds, I promise, right? Um, the, the more you talk with other people, in economics, we call that a spillover effect, right? In cybersecurity, Jason might have a word for it, uh, there where you use multiple vendors if you're in an enterprise and you use multiple vendors and whatnot because this one does something good and this guy's uh, good but this is what i think where most manufacturers fail to realize at the end of the day they're consumers as well so you see you know they don't just smoke their stuff now if you were a roller in a in in, in a farm in a particular country and you only had access to your stuff, I get you would smoke only your stuff that you roll, right? But if you're here in the States or even over the pond and, 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 and you're there, you're going you're gonna to smoke other stuff and explore. So why not explore together, right? If you explore together, maybe two components or three components, because that's like, you know, we all learned this in seventh grade, right? Exponential numbers and stuff like that. It might be high school for some people. I went to Catholic school. Anyway, right? So, <laughs> you know, but... So what do you think about that, Jason? Like, what do, you, what, what do you think about, like, the ability to, for companies to share the knowledge and collaborate? We're not talking about collaborate making a cigar, but collaborate for the cause. Because le cause at the end of the day, only 2% of the U.S. population smoke premium cigars. Well, I, certainly I echo everything you said. I totally agree. I think, so in my, in my world in the security community, we call that the ecosystem. Okay. Right? So everybody's trying to interconnect uh, security controls together. 
Uh, but there's a really popular concept of these better together campaigns mm-hmm. where you might partner with somebody who does something similar um, or something different, but you accent each other and go to market together on a campaign uh, for the same purpose uh, because we're all, you know, better together, right? To your point. So yeah, it's absolutely a lot of parallels there. Uh, and I do want to, you know, Andy, I'm glad you're on the show. I actually had a chance. Oh, I don't know. It's been probably three years or so ago that I was at a steakhouse here in Dallas and I had a chance to meet with some of the founders at Air McAuliffe. I wish I remembered their names. I just, I don't, but we were in the back room and it, uh, where you can smoke there and we shared a table and they gave me five or six sticks at the end of the, at the end of the dinner. And uh, I, they didn't last because they were so good. I smoked them very quickly. Um, big fan of McAuliffe. And um, uh, so I'm, I'm just glad you're on the show. You mentioned earlier something called the Passport Program. And I saw yeah. that on the website, but I wasn't sure what that was. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the Passport Program is something that we just started a couple of weeks back. And basically what it is, I have one here, um, McAuliffe Passport Tasting Passport. And what it is, is it's a way to smoke through our entire line. And there are, we have 16 different blends in our line. And we have a page in this passport for each of the blends. So what you would do is take your band off the uh, cigar and put it on the given page of the passport. And then underneath that, you have a description of the cigar. So you can learn a little bit more about the cigar uh, the strength, uh, size, wrapper, binder, filler. And then it gives you a, an area at the bottom where you can actually add your notes. So it's a cool way, you know, just like a passport for, um, like, I don't know, you're a bourbon drinker. If you ever did the bourbon trail, they give you a passport booklet. Yeah. You go around to the different distilleries and you get them stamped. Uh, you would just stamp it with your band. And then when this is finished, you have a little book booklet here of all the cigars and the notes that you did. And then you submit it to McAuliffe Cigars, either through our ambassador webpage uh, on the Facebook group or through our page or give it to a rep and we can verify it. And then you're going to get enter. You're going to get first a certificate saying that you completed it and you're allowed to complete more than one, by the way. And then you're going to be entered into a drawing that we're going to do on a weekly or monthly basis. Uh, right now we're doing it on a weekly basis to where we're going to pick a name out of it and if your name is picked, you're going to get an X amount, uh, anywhere from like $100 up to, I think we're going to do a couple for $1,000 of a gift card that you would could use at your own retailer. So basically, like say you shopped, you're in Dallas, say you shopped at Michael's and um, you filled this out and you were picked. We would say, hey, Jason, uh, what's your retail of choice? You'd be like, okay, it's Michael's. Okay, so one of the McAuliffe guys would call Michael's directly and give them the credit card over the phone and say, here, uh, this guy won our little passport drawing this week. He gets a $500 gift card to your store. Here's my credit card uh, to buy the gift card. And then it goes to you, Jason. So, uh, And then you can use it in the store on whatever you want. You don't have to use it on McAuliffe. Uh, but it's a way that we can have a fun little contest, reward our ambassadors, and also reward our brick and mortar partners that uh, we want to get behind 100% as well with this program. And we're actually also going to do a couple grand prizes. Uh, I think one at the end of the year where we're going to pick a name and then that person is going to be able to bring someone of significance with them to the warehouse in Weatherford, Texas and spend the day with Al, Dan, Amanda. Uh, we're basically going to smoke all the cigars we can and wine and dine you. Uh, it will be a very special trip. So that's, that that's awesome what we got going on with the passport program. And it's, it's really cool um, to see on our ambassador group, all the ambassadors that are actively filling this out. They'll take pictures. It's like, Oh, today I smoked the Connecticut. Here's my Connecticut cigar. I'm going to put the band on here and they take pictures and tell us their notes that they're getting off the cigar. It's just an interactive way to smoke through our line. And it's crazy. We've had a couple guys that have called us and told us, Hey, um, I, I was able to learn a couple free cigar or a couple cigars, uh, that I didn't even know you had in your portfolio by doing this passport thing, mm. uh, that are now my go-tos like, Oh man, this, this horrency, I didn't even know, you know, I hadn't tried one yet. I didn't even know it existed. And now it's my favorite one. So it's, it's a really, really cool program that I'm excited about. A lot of the brick and mortars uh, are excited about it as well. I have several of them. 
making their own passport packs uh, that they're that they're selling to their customers to help them go through the line. So it's it's really cool. Uh, uh, that's the passport program in a nutshell. I think that's it's freaking really genius. I think it's genius. It's genius. You Absolutely. set the customer up, you let them go on a journey, and you reward them. And by the way, you're also getting their feedback. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Like, like you're getting that absolutely. Feedback, you know for sure. And and the ambassadors. Are... I mean, the ambassador program. These guys, you know, several of them. Like you were saying, how active it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done a study that like ninety percent of these guys on this Facebook group interact with the Facebook group. You know, at least once a week. It's it's bananas how active they are, and they will go on and give us suggestions. They'll go on and tell us their thoughts, and we save that. We have a collection that we save in a different, you know, a branch of that Facebook group, and we'll go over it as a leadership team on our leadership meetings or what have you. If we find out that one of our ambassadors has a really good idea or really good input that we didn't think of before, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty phenomenal. It is. It. I, I think it's it's a smart move. Smart move all the way around. I'm, I'm, I'm totally impressed. I, I think it's awesome. Let's we'll freaking fly over here, Drew. You have a question? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, I, I was just I was going to jump into that same question Jason had earlier about the passport and the Phoenix program and the ultimate inventory. Like all these all these programs that they've been rolling out for the last couple of months now. Uh, you know, it's just really phenomenal how they're really reaching out to the consumer, involving the brick and mortar, just, you know, to get that consensus uh, of shared knowledge and participation in these programs. And so for them to be doing that, and pretty much, I, I'm going to say this, I'm not premature, I'm just going to say it, they're going to be leading the industry really, really quick on this level, especially during these times. The industry and needs it. The yes, industry, exactly. I've been saying this, it's like in my head since 2017 here at Story Geeks, I was saying what the industry needs. And then as I read press releases that McAuliffe sent, it's like, they're good ideas. They're, yep. get, they're, they're good ideas. I'm just saying. And, and, I, and I talk to people and they're like, yeah, well, you know, I don't know if it would do, I don't know if it would do well in my brick and mortar. Well, did you taste it? Well, no. Did you try it? No. Did you, did you, even, yeah. did you reach out to them? No. Well, what the hell? Well, I don't know if my customers like it. It's like, wait a minute. Don't you own a brick and mortar? Well, yeah. Isn't it your job to educate your customers? Because I can tell you in my job, either here at Security Weekly or in my advertising business, my job is to educate my customers. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? So McAuliffe is educating their customers. You might want to take page out of their book. I'm just saying. You know, it's just it's it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, Jude, you have well, a we little... made well go ahead. We made a uh we made a commitment and we actually put it in a letter as a press release to the industry and mm -hmm. to our ambassadors in January of this year. And it was basically our mission statement for 2020. Now COVID has made it a little bit challenging to follow through on some of these, but it also has presented opportunities mm -hmm. for us to follow through on certain things. And the, the promise basically was that we are going to be a hundred percent behind our brick and mortars, and that's how we want to grow. So we're going to grow yeah. our company by going by backing the brick and mortars. And some of these programs are ways of us backing the brick and mortars. And then the other part of that promise was we are going to dedicate a uh, hundred percent of our effort as well to growing our consumer base and our ambassador group. So we are focused. Our two main focuses as a company is growing behind brick and mortars and educating and engaging with our consumer base or con you know not even our consumer base but just consumer the cigar consumer base in general whoever wants to listen to us we are going to educate you and engage you in a way that no one else i guarantee you can do right now mm -hmm. and no one else puts the effort into it that we do on a daily basis and it's working it really is it's right. it's it's what we want to do and it's working and the ambassador group is a is a sure proof of that and then the you know the brick and mortar stuff that we're doing right now with the the passport program with the phoenix program that we did uh with the ultimate inventory program uh where we you know rewarded our most loyal brick and mortar customers uh that's that's all that's where our focus is that's how we feel we can grow because al mccallif will tell you there's going to become a point in you know 
probably the near future where the only place that you can smoke a cigar is in your brick and mortar retailer. So we need to be able to get behind them. There's no question with that. Yeah. Alma, uh, you know, hey, Al McAuliffe uh, and his crew behind him, all you guys at the uh, there have come up with multiple innovate, in, innovative ways to address cigar industry problems. And yeah. all the way from Predex to Ultimate Inventory on the consumer side, those are on the brick and mortar side, uh, people in the manufacturer side for you story geeks. But on the consumer side, you guys are covering all the angles. And what I like about it is it's like, it's almost like getting a new politician in a space who has survived on the outside and didn't go into politics to hide, you know what I mean? And is bringing fresh ideas to the table. And some of them are like, whoa. Like when I first heard about Predex, I was like, well, this is interesting. And, I, and, and Drew and I worked off of your press release letter and did a whole segment on the concept of Predex. And I was getting emails back and forth from people saying, "Well, you know, you don't know what it's like on the on the on 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 the on the the retailer side." Well, I used to own a cigar shop, but anyway, uh, you don't know what it's like on the manufacturer side. You you know, and then I got into the concept of PCA, and it's like you know, you never been to a show, so how the heck can you even talk about? This? It's like, dude, it's business, and he brings yeah. business concepts, and those are gonna catch up with him because everything I've been saying on Stogie Geeks since 2017 in January when I started was stuff that I think that the industry needs and I can honestly look you in the eye and tell you and tell the Stogie Geeks that McAuliffe Cigars is trying to come up with solutions to address manufacturing hurdles, federal regulation hurdles, consumer hurdles, and we do have hurdles as consumers. You know, what we're going to mm -hmm. spend, who we're going to smoke, what type of smoke are we are. We can go on and on with that. And you guys are doing everything that you possibly can in a short amount of time. I think it's pretty impressive. It'll catch up with you. I have a quick question uh, for Andy. Are you exclusively brick and mortar or do you do some online catalog stuff? That I don't know. We do do some uh, online catalog stuff. Okay. Uh, we are um, under contract with a couple different um, online catalogs mm -hmm. that once that contract runs out, we will be heavily evaluating if we want to continue that. Sure. Um, so sure. that is that is the truthful answer. No, no, I uh, think that, con yeah. that contract was already signed before we released our mission statement this year. So mm -hmm. uh, we're pro you know, we're going to reevaluate that deeply. Yep. Cause I checked and some have like, oh yeah, it's listed, but then they sold out, and I'm like, you know, and then with with this brick and mortar push, you know, I find a lot of companies uh, in the cigar industry they get jammed up, right? I'm sitting in a cigar shop, and the cigar shop's owner's like, I ordered five boxes of X, and they're like, well, it's on back order because of COVID, and I'm like, whoa, 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 excuse me, they're, they're not on back order because of COVID, you took. Tobacco's only aged five, year, five, five, five years. COVID started in March of this year. And if I go to a online retailer, I get that box shipped here in three days. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, no, 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 believe me, dude, it was like fireworks. And the cigar shop owner says, Jojo, this is why I love you. Like, he literally said, like, this is why I love you. And, and, and long story painless, cigar box was shipped to that shop in three, in three days. You know what I mean? <laughs> not from the online retailer. Because Alex, I told the cigar shop on I'm, 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 I'm like, go, go, I'm like, go there. I'm like, dude, this guy sells all your stuff. And it, it's a pretty well named known. I mean, you know, they're going to be on a bus tour without a bus. But anyway. You know? <laughs> but anyway. Drew, you have a question? Bus tour without a tour. You know about that? You know about the bus tour? No, no, I know. I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, hey, man. Hey, man. Paul, I, I'm, I'm surprised. Paul has not pulled me aside in my tenure here and says, Joe, man, you're a little, you're a little over. No, I'm just saying. You, you advertise a bus toy, you didn't have a bus. You're all going to show up in a Ford Fusion like me. Anyway, Drew, 
Drew, yeah. I know I'm you back. have questions. And we got to spend time talking to Andy about the sticks. We got to finally get to the sticks. You guys, everybody has at least another half hour. Are we good? Are we yeah, all good? I'm good. Let's uh, go. Good. Good answer. Yeah, you should have told, told everybody I'm going on with Joe. He doesn't own a clock, punch a clock. Trying to explain that to my girl every time I show up late. I was like, I don't want to watch. I don't know what time it is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, give us a question. Well, I want to, well, let's talk. Let's get into the cigars then because I, I, I've been wanting to uh, talk about this uh, Reserva Bravado. And, uh, I, and, and, and good point, Drew. Andy, I want to be educated more about the cigars. Because yeah. co- business-wise, I could talk about you till the freaking sunsets about business in McAuliffe. I think it's awesome there. I think we've proven that point. Let's spend some time and talk about the cigars. Good point. And then Jason will have some questions on the cigars, too. Educate us. This is it, Andy. All right, all right, all right. So we have 16 blends currently and pretty much two different portfolios. We have the Grande Bold Line. Uh, I'll show you an example of that one. The Grande Bold Line, uh, we have five different types of the Grande Bold. My favorite is the Sumatra. I love this Sumatra, especially in this size, but I'm a sucker for uh, small sticks. And this is a box pressed as well, which I love box press cigars. But the Grande Bold line made its uh, introduction to the industry last year at TPE, not this year at TPE, 2019 at TPE. And the main purpose was to have uh, fi- a, a new line that was a little bit more price point friendly. Uh, the MSRP with most of the Grande Bold is between seven and $11 MSRP, depending on the size and the blend. And there's five different blends. Uh, you got this one, the Sumatra, which is more medium bodied, nice Sumatra wrapper on it, a little bit of sweetness to it. Then you have the Matafina, mm-hmm. uh, which is the next Grande Bold line. It's a Brazilian wrapper on that one, a little bit darker. That one's also more on the medium bodied side. Then we have a Lajero, which Drew, I, I was told you really enjoyed the Lajeros. Oh, yeah. um, that is also a Sumatra wrapper, but it has some extra Lajero in the filler. Uh, gives it a little bit more strength. We have a Maduro, which is a Connecticut broadleaf Maduro wrapper on that, also full-bodied. And then we have a Nicaragua with a broadleaf wrapper as well, but Nicaragua binder filler. Um, that one is also full-bodied. So those five come out. We've kind of said this is our core line. This is our price point friendly line. This is, you know, all these are medium to full. Um, so that is the Grande Bold line. Now, the main other part of the line is considered the legacy line and the legacy line. We have 11 different blends. Mm -hmm. Uh, The most popular is going to be the Leenda. Uh, This is our number one seller. I don't have an example of the one in the coffin, uh, but you guys might realize uh, you might've seen this in a coffin at one point. Uh, It has an open face coffin presentation. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper nice nutty characteristic medium bodied i i love this cigar especially this size the number two there's also a larger one uh that is the number one um they uh still carry the gomez sanchez name on the band it's the only one that really still just shouts gomez sanchez and then we have the McAuliffe situation underneath it uh where we say McAuliffe and leanda number two so that is our number one seller another one of oh another part of the leanda uh, this one is one of my personal favorites, and that is the Leenda Special Edition. This one came out last year at the trade show at PCA. We only made 500 boxes of this cigar. It was very limited. It was the first special limited run cigar that we had ever made. And basically, it's the same blend as Leenda, but higher primings, aged for an additional three years. <laughs> Fantastic smoke. One of my complete favorites. This one's full bodied, a uh, really good smoke. And then another one of are my favorites in the legacy line is the McDalia, mm. which is named after um, the second generation of the Gomez Sanchez family, uh, McDalia uh, Sanchez. She was a head roller for Cuba back in uh, the seventies for Castro. Uh, and she still works very, in, uh, very hands-on in our factory today. Uh, this one has a Habano wrapper, a Sumatra binder, and it's just medium plus, nice sweet, nice spice. Uh, we did a little contest with our cigars in March called the McAuliffe Madness, where we had mm-hmm. all of our ambassadors vote on our different blends. They were all put head to head in a March Madness style bracket. 
and they voted that Magdalia as their favorite cigar, um, which was kind of crazy. It beat out it beat out the Leenda. So outside of that, we have a Connecticut. Our Connecticut is more of a Cuban style Connecticut. Has a little bit of spice to it. It's more on the medium bodied side. Uh, we have a cigar called the Experiencia La Crema, uh, which is a some um, Sumatra wrapper Habano binder. More medium body, nice creamy note to that one. Uh, we have the newest uh, Vitola to our line is the Herencia Toro. Uh, before it was in a, um, a uh, I'm not doing this right. There's the camera. You gotta go opposite. <laughs> yep. There you go. <laughs> there we go. The Herencia. Yep. Uh, prior to last week, it was only offered in a box press torpedo about five inches long. Uh, very good cigar, but the Torpedo, I think, hindered sales a little bit. So we were like, man, this is such a good blend. Let's come out with a Toro size mm. on it. So we released that. And this Maduro Toro, Nicaraguan Maduro wrapper, Ecuadorian Sumatra uh, binder, Nicaraguan Honduran fillers. This cigar is money. Like, this is a really, really good cigar. I had a retailer the other day tell me, man, this is the first cigar I've smoked that has attitude from you guys. Like, I didn't think McAuliffe could provide a cigar with attitude like it's it's a punchy in the mouth flavor a little bit of spice to it it's it's very very good i'm i can't put these down i'm smoking them like three a day it's ridiculous i'm crazy but um <laughs> so we have that one we have the riata which is our most mild stick that was named after al's restaurant uh that he has created there's one in fort worth and one in alpine texas and then you guys were alluding to the reserva and that was the cigar that kind of started the whole partnership between Al McAuliffe and um, the yeah. Gomez Sanchez family. That Reserva cigar, very special, very elegant, very refined. Comes in two different sizes, a Toro and a Churchill. Uh, that was a cigar that Al challenged them to make for him when he met them and said, I want you to find the best tobacco possible. I don't care what the price is. Go out there and just make me a thousand cigars. And that's what they came up with. And he freaking loved it. So uh, that is, it's a little on the higher end price point wise, but it's been heavily awarded. Uh, it was our first and only cigar to this point. That was a top 25 in cigar aficionado. It got number 17 in 2018. And it's, it's a fantastic smoke. If you want to really treat yourself uh, to a good fuller bodied cigar, and I am, I'm, I'm missing something. I don't. Seventeen I I is good all. considering you don't advertise a lot in cigar aficionado. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. I had in the morning whenever I uh, you had Amanda had sent me your um, kind of portfolio there, and I was scrolling through my phone because I take a picture of of uh, of of what I smoked and it has a timestamp there. I've had in the morning that I put a star next to um, there for morning coffee, 8 o'clock in the morning, first stick of the day, super cool. Uh, it's a white label with uh, 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 blue. Uh, it has a gold, the Gomez Sanchez uh, label on the top. Oh, with the okay. It's called the uh, Tosadores. Tosadores. So that is actually... a freaking good morning smoke. Like that yeah. is a that is a a, a a sweet morning smoke. I would even go as far as saying like last stick of the night. You know what I mean? If you don't, if you're you you know you've had a couple sticks and and you know yeah. you've had an ultimate guys day. You know you went golfing and you went out for dinner and you know pre kids right? Yeah, the torcedor is <laughs> you had the old you had the old label with the blue and the white. Yeah, it's a blue and a white. And, and the thing is, is, is I had this because I was going through my phone as you were talking, so like I could prepare because it wasn't in my computer notes. And then I had again. It says uh, Sanchez. Uh, I'm sorry, Gomez Sanchez family, 1934, and it's it's got the the McAuliffe label on the top. I think that was the reserver. The Reserva, yeah, it was the the Reserva, there yeah, from from yeah, that box. Super cool sticks, um, you know, you, like like when, whenever since you sent me that, I make sure that it's the first stick that I have of that day, so it's like not altered. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. palette wise. And I remember those are the two I was like, wow, like like you know they're you know for for a mild. I saved the 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 stronger stuff that I gotta get to. 
um, there. But certainly, like th those are two sticks that 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 really stick out um, there. Unfortunately, like a couple of the vendors here in the Northeast, like you know Providence Metro. I know it's Massachusetts, but Boston Metro there. Um, I, I I don't know who your sales rep is, but they better get on the ball. So our sales rep in the New England area is, uh, his name is Paul Major. Well, if Paul's watching and this show, Paul, if you need an introduction to show to to any shop here, like an introduction, I can tell you which shop. There's only one shop in Rhode Island that you can't go to because he don't see any reps. He calls you. That's his rule, right? But there are, there are 39 shops here in the state of Rhode Island, so you can have a field day here. Uh, email me. Uh, at Joe H at StogieGeeks dot com, and I'll give you an intro. But anyway, yeah, I'll, what's his I'll name? Let him know. His name is Paul. His name, his name is Paul Major. He okay. uh, he lives in New Jersey. Okay. He um he was doing a lot larger territory until this year. He was one of our original reps that we hired. Um, and we have recently, since COVID, shrank his territory to allow him to be able to focus more on your area, Joe, and, and, and further north of that even. Yep. Uh, yeah. so he, he, he'll be, he'll be making his rounds there. Uh, mind you, we've only probably been on the road really again for about a month. Sure. Uh, so, so, but he'll be making his rounds. I know he's been up to New Hampshire already. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to, I was going to sure say he gets up in your neck of the woods. He's so. got to go. He's got to go, uh, real, well, not really north of us, but two hours north of us and then two hours south of us, like Connecticut, there's some good shops in there too, but Rhode Island yeah. has like 38 shops. I say 39 because I, I I'm going to be responsible for the 39th shop that's going to open for the humidor. I'm doing all of their purchasing, doing that there. But but look um, at that. So so the, the, there's going to be 39 shops in Rhode Island. Like they're like freaking Dunkin' Donuts is here. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> like you know because I talked to the Story Geek listener and they're like, you know, you always talk about this cigar shop culture, and uh, the f closest place to me, it's like an hour drive, man. I order online, and I can't find half the crap you talk about. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? So, yeah. So, yeah. So, if, if he needs any help or whatever, put him in touch with me offline, and I'll give him, a, I'll, I'll give him like, a virtual, like, where, where to go, where I think you would have a, 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 a shot, and I can give him, like, ten people off the rip. At least so, Sweet. so when he comes down or calls first, he can be kind of focused on the sales cycle. But, yeah. Cool. Drew, I know you yeah, got another but, question. Uh, and Jason's, Jason's moving. I can see him because I can see everybody, <laughs> right? You guys only see what's live. I guess uh, Jason's itching too. So you guys want to do rocks, paper, scissors for the next question? Or what do you think? Here we go. I'm going to throw go one out there real quick. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, so, Drew. Like both. you know, Joe, Joe and I have been talking about these cigar clubs, you know, these cigar pack clubs and things of that nature. Um, have they approached you or have you have you looked down that endeavor uh, with some of these cigar clubs that people are joining, uh, especially now during COVID-19, uh, you know, with the pandemic being around? I see people going, they go to the brick and mortar, they do their curbside stuff. And then, uh, but a lot of these, uh, man, these, these cigar clubs are really popping on the scene and really becoming popular with a lot of the We've cigar uh, uh, and you know, consumers. We've been approached by a few of them. Um, uh -huh. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you the names of them. I know Cigar Federation uh, uses some uh -huh. of our cigars on a regular basis. Uh, there was okay. one that reached out to us recently in South Florida. And like I said, I can't remember the name of it, but they, they, we put one of our, we put the Medallia in with their pack. Uh, and then there's a, there's a uh, club based out of Arizona called Red Beard. Uh, they've used us a couple times. Um, hmm. But, yeah, we've been approached by a few of them. I wouldn't say they've been knocking down our doors to get in on it. Uh, sure. But, yeah, it's you could you could find us out there in some of those. So you also got to remember, still, Drew. It's still a newer thing. Yeah. That's like, something that, it, it, it is. that I'm not overly educated on. Yeah, yeah it is. But you also, uh, you also got to remember they have a business model, too. You know what yeah. I mean? So, so mm -hmm. if you, if we want to take five minutes to talk about that business model, you guys just bought me another five minutes, right? So, <laughs> so, so no. If you want to talk about that, because what what they're gonna do is they're got, you, they may not have approached you because of probably the position of your company. And what I mean mm -hmm. by that is that 
they're going to try to approach you and try to get cigars for X amount, right? And and then, you know, it's not like a retail situation where you go from the manufacturer to a retailer and the retailer has Keystone. They can't sell a Keystone to be competitive for the Cigar Club deal. So yeah. you might look at it and be like, bro, we ain't no Groupon. You know what I mean? And, 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 yeah. and, and it's essentially a business model like that. And there are certain vendors that want to – that's their business model where they just, sure. you yeah. know, do, do – do yeah, that we're, there, so. we're not actively we're not yep. actively seeking to be part of these packs. Mm -hmm. uh, if one if one reaches out to us yeah. and it sounds yeah, good, and, just you know, see a we, couple. Of, we do uh, our little research on it to make sure that they're not like heavily discounting whatever they're sending out. Uh, we'll be happy to, right. to work with them, but it's not something we're actively actively seeking to be part of these packs. That's not our that's not our goal. Like like we said, our goal is to be brick and mortar driven, and like you right. said earlier, Joe. Uh, a part of that is because the tobacconists, we want the tobacconists to be able to tell these guys about it and the cigars without it just showing up in their mailbox. They don't know anything about it. Because, uh, so. because, okay, industry, pay attention to this, okay? This is it, right? Because if you have a brick and mortar, you have to educate your consumers. Absolutely. Like, what the hell? Like, educate consumers. Don't hire a girl with freaking big tits and freaking slinging drinks. This isn't the freaking OK Corral over here. This is I a, mean, it, this it, is a brick it, and mortar it, shop. It boggles my mind, Joe, how many brick and mortars there are out there that they will not go into a humidor and talk about the cigars to their customers. Oh. They just put it on the shelf and they just let it, oh. they let it go. And then... And then you go in there and you're like, hey, how come my stuff's not moving? It's like, I don't know. No one, you know, no one's buying it. It's like, well, are you telling anybody about it? Like, if, if, <laughs> if you're not going, if you're not going to, like, we're a new brand and not everybody knows about our cigars. If you just throw it on the shelf and don't tell anybody about it, unless they're an ambassador, or saw it in a magazine or whatever, they're not going to pick it up. So it's like, why waste my time and your time and your shelf space if you're that type of operation? Right. Like, we're just... We're, we're not going to fly off your shelf unless you have, like I said, an ambassador that's nearby that just knows about us already. Yep. So it's like, you know, I, when I, I, when I'm out there selling and when I tell my sales team, you know, strategies on how to grow the, grow their, uh, their regions and their business, uh, sure. those aren't the top of our list. Those right. shops, not right now. It's just, it's not fair to us and it's not fair to, it's not fair to them, honestly, right. as much as they don't, they might not care. It's, it's like, not fair. And more importantly, as you, as the, as their, their mentor, who they have to report to, you need to educate them to identify which type of shop they are. Because mm -hmm. McAuliffe is only going to do well in a shop that wants to engage in its consumers. It's a, Absolutely. And I am by no way saying that it's a cash and grab for that cigar shop owner. It's just a cigar shop owner Sometimes they, the sometimes the the consumer needs a little bit of an education, especially when you have a product that hasn't been around for eighty years. Yeah. Like especially, so you know, once they pick out that that um, once your 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 sales reps can pick out that um, I identify which type of shop they are, then I think that they can move. Yeah, forward. and it, and it's funny to me too. Like you, you we've had several shops during the coronavirus situation that we're forced to only do carry out or forced to do delivery or what have you or curbside mm -hmm. is what I'm looking for. Yep. And then they sit there and it's like, they did two months of that. And then you call up to ask them, Oh, how the brand's doing. And they're like, Oh, the brand's not doing so well. I'm thinking about getting rid of it. I'm like, okay, so you're going to get rid of our brand because you're in a situation to where uh, for two months it was curbside only. And, I mean, did you tell people about McAuliffe? Probably not. You probably answered the phone and just took out the Monte Cristos and Romeo and Julietas sure. uh, that they're asking for. So it's like, is that fair to us? Not, not really. But, but you know, isn't it fair you know, to them? If they don't understand that they bought the product. Whatever agreement they made with you, whether it's terms, not terms, whatever, they bought the product that they have to keystone. They can mm -hmm. sell it. Like sell it, like you know what oh, I mean. My 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 favorite Joe is like, oh, I bought the product as a favor to you. <laughs> sure, come on, 
<laughs> you wow. just you just you Thanks. just asked for another three hours of an episode. <laughs> Jason, I know you're getting itchy. Let's I, I do gotta, it, Jason. I actually, I gotta go. But listen, you uh, gotta this go. Has been so much fun. Thank you. I gotta go. I got a. I got a meeting. I gotta run to. I right, apologize. Man. No, it's I, all good. This has been so much fun, and uh, I do want to plug the McAuliffe Grand Bold or Grande is oh, probably yeah. how you say it. Bold. That Maduro is so nutty and so delicious. I love it. It's a great breakfast cigar. Uh, but uh, Andy, it's been so much fun listening to you talk about McAuliffe. I wish you the best of luck, and thanks for having me on the program, guys. I hope to do another one. Jason, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. You will thanks, take Jason. care, man. Right, yeah, yeah. So. Um, you know, uh, in, in regards to brick and mortars, they, they really need to educate their, their consumers. That, I think, is the element missing. And I speak from this because here in Rhode Island with, with the 38 shops, right, we've gone through a metamorphosis from tobacconist to now bars you can smoke in, if that makes sense, right, because of the smoking yeah. rules. And through that metamorphosis, I'm seeing a lot of the classic facings not moving because they're not doing anything, right? They're just moving on their ADA reputation. And I'm seeing some boutiques really hit the ground running. And the key, I think, and the differentiator is having that either humidor manager or however the, their business model is set up, having them engage and getting their customers to turn them on to at least try this line and and get them into an experimental phase. I know a cigar shop owner who had sponsored my show and and honestly it, it sponsored my radio show when I started pre Stogie Geeks, right? Back in twenty fourteen. And um you know it was a radio show about cigars. And he has I, I'd be lying if I said to you seventy facings in this humidor. Right, Lion, like it's a small place, right? But the volume of cigars that he does, why? Because all of his consumers are in experimental mode. You know what I mean? Like that. So if he brings in something new, they're like, "Hey, yeah, you want to try this? Try that? Try that?" Remember? Now there are the go tos, and, and 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 there's a lot. He does well with cash and carry, but there's a lot of consumers that go in there and they want some of the classic facings, and he has them, and he moves them. But the bulk of the hangout at the bar there is the experimental phase, people, where they'll go in one day and smoke this, go in this day, smoke that, go in that day, smoke that. And I think that that, that, that relies on a lot of the educational component and asking your, your questions. You just can't work behind a cash register and pull the thing and, and take the money and do the transaction. You need to ask what they like, where they go and whatnot. But, that, but that's your sales rep's job to go out there yeah. and to push that because – Unfortunately, because of the, the time tenure, now if we were having this conversation 40 years from now, your business strategy would change. You know, if you, you know, 40 years from now, that would put me at 85. I don't know if I'll still be doing Stogie Geeks. I'll probably be senile <laughs> by then if I was, right? <laughs> you know, but, but again, you know, you have to, yeah, 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 it's a lot of effort and hats off to the sales team to what they accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's on us to educate the retailer uh, and get them motivated to push the product and this and that. But li like we already just said, like, but then when we're not in the store, it's up to the retailer to educate their consumers. And like you said, yeah. they bought the product, they brought it in. Uh, they're doing a disservice to, to both of us. If they just think they're just going to throw it on the shelf and it's going mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to move. We need, we need to get behind it. You know, and honestly, like we realize that is part of the industry. Like I'm not dumb. I, I realize that real quick that that is part of the industry. And there's people out there like that. And, and that's another reason why we've made the decision to put so much effort and consideration and focus into our ambassador group and growing that engagement on the consumer side of things. If we can do that, if we can do some of these retailers jobs for them, you know, the rest is, the rest is gravy. They just go in and, and buy the cigars because they heard them heard of it through us or they learned about it through us. Like that's, that's what we, that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Drew, so. you have another question? No, I was just going to say on the, on to this point is that, you know, that's what we do at my cigar lounge. Cause I, you know, we're, you know, one thing Nomi and I do is that we, we really focus in on our customer base. Uh, it's either him or I, 
uh, that's there. And when we're there, what is your cigar lounge? What is your lounge? That's uh, Bedford Tobacco uh, over there in uh, in oh, Bedford. Prestige. Uh, prestige, yeah, Prestige uh, Tobacco, yeah, and Lounge. Uh, so yeah, yeah. You know, Nomi and I, we work very close. We work close with our manager. Right now, he's you know he's furloughed because it's just you know it is what it is with this time. Uh, but we make sure that they really understand that when they when the consumer comes in the store. Uh, you know, our store is pretty small now, and we're expanding. If, if you guys don't know, uh, we should have that done by the end of July. Uh, but we're expanding pretty good uh, to a pretty good size uh, lounge. But what I'm, what I, the point I'm trying to make is that when a consumer comes in, we give them a dedicated attention. You know, get get their profile, get what they like, and then turn them on to five to ten different sticks, and then you know, and just and and then just kind of hone in that. But not to the point where it turns them off, where they only want to want want one or two sticks. Most of the time, they they end up walking out of there with four or five of our recommendations, and it's it's pretty awesome to see that uh, that joy in their face when they come back, and they bring the bands with them, and they're like, yeah, I want this, and I want that, and I'll take you know five of these or a box of these, and it, it's it's all up to you know our, our our people to to really you know focus in with the consumer and, and help them. Um, other than that, uh, it, it 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 registers uh, you know success sales at the end of the day, and and so I can't I can't you know when I go to I I go to other cigar lounges I go to, I go to Michael's and I know I know Spence over there uh, I think it's Tracy Spence Tracy um, yeah yeah when I go over there and I just go there and just kick back and we talk shop and man I mean it's 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 so nice to see another shop in our area that does the same thing really focuses on the customer you know he'll let you go in I mean you know he allows you to come in go into the humidor and then he'll come by and just check up on you well you know you know just in case you are looking for something uh different or something new or just just want to chit chat and just mm. catch up so Tra- Tracy's one of the best in the industry as yes. far as like you go in there, you pick up a cigar, Tracy will come in and he'll tell you not only the makeup of the cigar, the history of the cigar and yeah. how he was at their factory or met them in Vegas and how cool of a person is that is behind yeah. the cigar. Like Tracy's fantastic at that. So he you is, get the whole, yeah. you get the whole thing from him. Yeah. And that's what we do too on our side. We, you know, we're, we're very, you know, two, three minute, bam, Tracy. He could not. I mean, he could tell you the history in probably in one minute, and then you 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 feel out, you walk out of there feeling more educated and more uh, more knowledgeable, in, you know, in your next cigar picks and what have you. All right. Yeah. Before we pivot subjects, I truly to back up what both of you guys were saying, it, it I really believe that the cigar consumer wants that knowledge. Yep. wants that oh, knowledge yeah. from there and if you don't and, if, and and believe me i've talked to some brick and mortars and i says and i only come back and they say well you know i don't like to harass them in the human or i don't like to get involved blah, blah 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 i said listen if you don't believe me just look at the craft beer industry the ultra craft beer industry where mm-hmm. it's freaking 18 dollars in the northeast i don't know what it is with you guys with taxes right but it's 18 dollars for four freaking beers in a can and there's a half hour line out the door for a release. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and, Crazy. And, 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 and and that's that. And you know, it, you know, it was it was funny because when I started Stogie Geeks um uh here in in twenty seventeen, Paul Azadorian, the founder of the company, wanted to do like a craft beer episode. You know what I mean? And I was like, dude, it's a great idea, bad for making money. And he's like, Why? And I says, it's simple. These guys have lines out the doors for people. They're not going to advertise. They're not going to want to advertise their product. They're, they're doing well with the email uh, and Facebook groups and freaking line out the door for their product. Because, again, they want to try what's new. They want to get out there. And I think that the more that you can focus on that, the better off that you guys will, will be for sure. Okay. Absolutely. Know? And like what you said, the consumer – definitely wants that information and our ambassador group is a great example of that and how engaged they are with our off the record interviews that we have done mm-hmm. with anything that we're given out i mean the viewership is is there and guess and and they ask questions during the whole thing they're asking questions and we're we're providing them with information and it's just they love it they mm-hmm. love it they want to know your consumers want to know what 
the heck they're smoking. Especially you know, for the this, most part, the majority of them. Oh. Yep, especially in this day and age, and you know. Uh, oh, absolutely. Especially in this day and age, talk to a lot of uh, uh, auto salesmen too, right? And and their consumers are now coming in, and they know you know cylinder they, they know all the stats and whatnot and it, it becomes a financial transaction for them because they know what they want and in 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 any industry the consumers can add you know if you're buying a freaking dishwasher for your house or a refrigerator right you want one that tells the temperature and outside and whatever you want to know the what the weather is in guam it shows up on you eating your cereal Whatever you want to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, however you want, but but you go whether into in Guam. You, you you whatever, right? You go, you go. Have you ever been to Guam? I haven't. But if you travel that far, they should speak non-English. It's like freaking. It's like going to like Florida temperature-wise, but um, I'm trying to be really politically correct here. Uh, hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> Give me a second here. All right? I mean, it's a lot of, hey, it's a lot of violence in the world, right? I'll have to have Johnny to get my backpack and I'll have it behind my seat, right? <laughs> right? Oh. No. They, they, it's, like, it's like going to Florida temperature-wise, but like going to Disney World tourist-wise with the, <laughs> with the visitors. You, we all have a visual? Okay, moving forward, right? <laughs> You don't have a visual, Drew. You have a visual? Yes, I got okay. a visual. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it's super cool. It, it's uh, but if you travel that far on a plane, it, you need to speak not English. Like, it's like going to Australia, right? <laughs> you go to Australia. It's a twenty-six hour flight, twenty-six seven hour flight. Freaking, you get off the plane, they speak English, and the weather's beautiful. Like you know, eh, I go to Maryland in the summer. It's a quick flight, you know. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, what are you guys gonna do? Uh, well, there's no PCA, right? There's no shows, other no than show. other than the brick and mortar reluctance. How has kind of like COVID, right? Every business in this industry, outside of this industry, restaurants, anything, no business is safe, and every business has to pivot in their own way. How, how, what 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 types of um what types of corona discussions are you guys having other than brick and mortar reluctance like okay i can tell you i'll go first right and i'll be quicker so you can get so you can know what 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 type of question i'm asking here in the cybersecurity field we go to conferences right and when we go to conferences security weekly interviews 50 people in a week blah 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 we do all this transaction there's business transactions going back and forth. There's interviews. They're paid. They're part of an effort. We're not traveling, right? We were supposed to be in Disney World two weeks ago. We're supposed to be in Vegas in the first week of August. We're supposed to be in uh, Atlanta the second week of October, cybersecurity-wise, here at, at Security Weekly. And we've had to pivot as a business. You know, We've had to pivot yeah. there. Uh, non-transactional day-to-day stuff, right? I know you're selling the brick and mortars and going there. What types of discussions are you having? Like, you know, like, okay, well, there's no PCA show this year, right? Now, with or without COVID and whatever the PCA has, okay, wh- whatever happened last year, and and but, but other than other than um, the PCA situation outside of COVID, like. You, 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 I'm sure you're hearing stories, brick and mortar, furloughing employees. They did or didn't get the PPE. No, PPP, right? The, 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 PPP. yeah, PPP, uh, you know, and whatnot. And they're trying to do like what it's, it's certainly uncertain times for a lot of businesses there. And I know that you were doing the, um, direct shipment for the, that program, uh, f- to help the ultimate them. inventory. Yes, the ultimate inventory. Where if you were brick and mortar and they ordered it, it would go direct and whatnot. But like, uh, is that like still a factor? And the reason why I'm asking, oh, yeah. is is it's like you know they're gonna have to pivot somewhere. Yeah. So, you know, we had made the decision beginning of the year that we were not going to attend the PCA show anyways. Yep. Uh, that decision was mostly based on. The fact that we felt 
given where our company was at, we could utilize that money in more effective ways Mm -hmm. and then revisit going to the show in 2021. And that meant hiring a marketing team. That meant uh, hiring some new sales reps, getting some, you know, more representation boots on the ground out there. We felt like that would go a lot further than throwing another big amount of money at a PCA trade show. So the canceling of the PCA show particular did not really affect us because we had already planned on going, uh, not going this year. However, you know, when COVID happened in March, we all got together as a leadership team and we came up with, you know, a bunch of different ways that we were going to attack the industry given what was going to become the new norm, at least for, you know, a two, three, four, five month, period of time and it looks like it's going further Uh, the first thing was we wanted to engage our ambassadors on a whole nother level um we felt like a lot of them were going to be working from home now a lot of them might actually lose their jobs or get furloughed they're going to have a little bit more extra time on their hands so we put in a lot of uh effort into our ambassador group with the interviews that we've been speaking about we did you know we were doing there was eight seven or eight straight weeks where we were doing three shows a day Mm -hmm. Uh, and that started with mccallough madness in the beginning and then we went to a show where we were educating we we featured one of our blends every day for you know three straight weeks and talked about the blend and educated the the uh the consumers on that, the ambassadors on that. And then we did our ambassador round table, which was our afternoon show where we would bring on um, brick and mortar retailers, interview them. We would bring on other reps. We, and then we started bringing on actual ambassadors and talking to them. And then in the evening we would do our off the record where we'd bring on industry personalities uh, during COVID and focus and showcase a different brand or a media outlet, or we even brought on, um, some professional photographers, professional football player we brought on and we talked about, you know, just their lives and what they bring to the table and that were just cigar smokers. So uh, we had a lot of fun with that. We, we had great success with that because we were like, like we're going to engage the consumers. And our feeling was when things started opening up again, we would have this like very powerful, strong army of ambassadors that are just going to go into the market and, and, break down the walls of our brick and mortars and say, give me McAuliffe, give me McAuliffe. I want McAuliffe. And, you know, it it worked to an extent. So we did that. Another program that we did uh, in May, we unveiled what we're calling the Phoenix program. I actually have the little booklet right here. The Phoenix program was a brick and mortar friendly program to allow them to rise from the ashes of COVID and, take advantage of, you know, certain margins that we were going to offer them uh, to really get behind our brand and um, be able to, to make some money off of that with some really good financial attractive, you know, deals that they were getting. And we have that program still in effect right now. It unveiled in May and it's going all the way till August and it allows our our retailers that are struggling to get in on it and then reap the benefits of it actually through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So that was another program that we offered to them to help them kind of recover from their situation as well. Um, And then today, you know, we got the passport program. That's another way to engage the consumers on smoking through our line, Uh, just stuff like that. Like you said, the ultimate inventory is still out there that allowed the retailers to be able to order products from us, even if they didn't have it in stock. And then we would drop ship that product straight to the consumer's door. So I always made the joke that they could do it in their underwear if they wanted to, uh, in their bed, they could order product. If someone was asking them for a certain McAuliffe product that they didn't carry, they could just order it, you know, from their laptop, get the money, and then we'll ship it straight to the consumer. So that has been fairly successful as well. That's And and now, now we're in a point, you know, where we're, you know, some of these guys, some of these regions are scaling back a little bit on their reopening phases, yeah. but we're still out there, you know, seeing our retailers. We're going by the different region mandates, whether it's be a mask. I have my sales teams. They, I, I make sure they have freaking masks and they, they walk in to the store with a mask on uh, to show that we're, you're, we're, you know, we're, we're abi- abiding by the rules. Out sure. there. We're not, yeah. we're not above it. Uh, we're just salesmen. So 
uh, it's and then I make sure that they call ahead, you know, the week in advance to where they plan on going the next week to make sure that, you know, they're comfortable with a traveling sales rep coming in. So, yeah. you know, unfortunately, with COVID, it's an ever evolving situation right now. Um, I hope to God that we don't go through another lockdown situation because mm. I learned out real quickly that I'm not meant to be a debt behind the desk worker. Mm. <laughs> so um, I like getting out there and seeing people and moving around every day. Uh, yeah. So, but you know, it's, it's an ever evolving situation. We're just going to keep coming up with, with new and exciting things. We have, you know, the Herencia's release last week. We have the McAuliffe a, which was the to be named Maduro that is re-releasing here in August. Uh, we have a whole slew of new swag that we're having coming out. So we're saying we're trying to stay as exciting and, you know, progressive as possible uh, during all this situation. And I know you had that interview with Dan. Dan likes to move fast. Yes. He likes he likes to come up with stuff and let's put it in. Let's put it into play and let's see what happens. Um, right. And, you know, doing all that throughout COVID has really got my me and my team ready for whatever's next. So like whatever's next, we're going to, we're going to run with it and we're going to make sure that it's successful. You got to move still- fast. You got to move yeah. fast. I don't care what the situation yeah. is. You know, I was talking to um, a colleague of mine this morning about a situation. I'm like, yeah, man, like you, you got to move on it. Like that, that's you, you got, you, that's it. You got, you got to go forward like now, you yeah. know what I mean? And the next situation yeah. we're going to see is I think we're, what are we a month away from that predicate deadline? Yes. Now it's, yeah. it's, it's creeping up. So <laughs> yeah, we're going to have, we're going to have that come to play. Um, I really think you mentioned Predex earlier. Yes. I really think that is really going to start taking off mm-hmm. through the end of the year here as you know, I've always, and I'm not going to name any names, but I've always been of the belief in this industry. When I came in, I came from the hotel hospitality industry and it was a very proactive thinking industry oh, um, sure. as a manager in a hotel. You always had to be proactive on what you were going to do with your with your sales team, with your front desk, with your customers, your guests that you're staying. You got to be proactively thinking. And I, my biggest complaint when I got in the cigar industry is I felt like a lot of the industry was reactive, not proactive. And I that's another reason I appreciate working for McAuliffe because we have quickly and we've you know, shown this, obviously, that we're proactively thinking company. We're going to not wait for the situation to come to us. We're going to have a solution for the situation before it comes. Yep. So that's that's just in our culture. That's in our DNA at McAuliffe. So we are proactively thinking all the time of what we can do next and what we can what we can have go into play. And, you know, Predex was unveiled at the end of last year. And I really think the problem is it's the problem, honestly, is a lot of guys aren't going to come on board until it's reality. And that's yeah. sad to think about, honestly. It is. It is because I think timing is everything, but you can wait to release or you can take a proactive approach. I think after the PCA last year and after some of the hearings that have happened, Predex was born out of we need to act now. And then people had their in- initial reluctance. And then when something becomes an, a reality, they might be saying we should probably take a second look at that. And that's not a bad thing either. You know? Exactly. And I still get to this day these guys that ask uh, exactly what it is or what's the purpose or that's never going to work. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have – we have Dan and Al that have seen that kind of system work in multiple industries. Um, So I think you're kidding yourself if you don't think something like that's going to work. And I can understand some of the bigger manufacturers that just don't see it as a benefit. Mm -hmm. I I get that they have enough resources to, to make it on their own without it, but there's many companies that I think are going to benefit from it. There's many, there is many. Well, I had two questions. Uh, the first one you answered, what's new for McAuliffe and what came out. So you answered that uh, there and what just came out. So that's super cool there. So we just uh, lost another 10 minutes of interview, right? Uh, <laughs> I want to ask both of you guys for five more minutes. We have got to talk about Drew's gadget. Does everybody have five Uh-oh. minutes? Drew, you have five minutes? Yeah. 
Yeah, I got five minutes. All right. Hey, but I, Joe, I wanted to, I, Well, no, we got to talk about your gadget. We got to do no, it. <laughs> God. God. No, I, wanted to point, I wanted to point out is that, you know, one of the things about McAuliffe's, uh, I want to tell our story geeks, I want to inform them of this. Go to their website, check out their website, go through their, uh, go through the different uh, tabs. One of the best tabs I've seen out there, again, you know, when, when events are fully rolling again, uh, I'm not sure if the ones on there are still, you know, in play, but man, they got one of the best uh, calendars for events where you can export, import that calendar or export it out and just kind of keep up with the things that are in your region. And then uh, click the tabs through it where, the, where it says read more and you get to know who, uh, you know who's going to be there on behalf of McAuliffe and and check those out because those are pretty these are pretty cool. I just wanted to point that out. Yes, good point too. Yeah. Now for you, <laughs> still geeks listening, listening and watching, <laughs> and for Andy, Drew had posted on my Facebook. I think it was in the beginning of the week or maybe last weekend. Yeah. Have you seen this app? Or, did you bring it? Cigar medic? No, it's in the truck. Okay. Well, well, Drew will give you a Drew posted pitches. So if you follow me, Joe Hosampa on Facebook or Facebook.com forward slash J Hosampa. I think it's J Hosampa. It's either J Hosampa or Joe Hosampa, right? Um, okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> y- Drew said, Have you used this? And I said, Oh my God, what the hell is this thing? You yeah. stick the pointer up the cigar's thing. It's like a proctologist thing, right? <laughs> what, what what is it? What what? True. So T- take us through this, and Andy, no holds barred on this apparatus because I want I want your feedback. I think it's important, right? It's very important. True. Tell us about your new scientific experiment <laughs> that you've been doing with all of your cigars in the humidor. Yeah. So basically, what happened was that I've been getting these from our Stow Geeks listeners. I've been getting emails about this cigar medic uh, device that. Basically, it's a uh, humid, uh, humid humid meter. So you just stick the prongs <laughs> into the foot of the cigar, and then it it tells you, you know, if your cigar is in a good smokable range. So a uh, good smokable range would be between 60 and 70. So in that field, I think the sweet spot there is about 65 to, to 68 is the sweet spot there. Uh, if it's below 60, then, uh, according to their chart on back of their uh, uh, on back of their product that they sent out to you, uh, it, it's not if it's below sixty in the fifties, what have you. That you should let that cigar continue to to uh, rest, uh, age, uh, what ha- what have you. Uh, so yeah, so <laughs> so you know, and I and and I you know everybody emails me or sends me these photos on facebook or uh instagram and so yeah so i was intrigued i said okay well let me go ahead and order this thing and uh 29.95 and uh you know so i get it it got it pretty quick i mean it thing came like within like within two days so i was impressed with that so i got the device and uh so for the next three hours my wife couldn't find me <laughs> so anyway it's, Andy, it's got these testing two all your cigars huh? it's got these yeah. two prongs that you stick in the cigar you stick yeah. it through the tip? Uh, you no, know, you stick it through the foot of the, uh, the cigar, the opening. Uh, yeah, the foot. So, uh, but, but you know, this this device, I also came to find, they use this device to, to, to meter the humidity in wood. So that's where it was actually where this device came uh, came to be, I think, or they got the idea uh, to come up with this device for cigars uh, because they do have one for wood. So you take, if you want to look, see how uh, <laughs> how wet the wood is. Because you don't, cause <laughs> you don't <laughs> want a wet wood when you're on a fire pit, right? Because what happens? Exactly. Nothing. It still it burns. Burn. If, it's yeah. a, if you put wet wood in an existing fire, it'll still burn. It'll so still anyways... Burn. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. But you know, it's interesting because in that in that in that uh, uh, card that you get with this device, it tells you what's going to happen if you smoke the cigar. What what could happen? Like run uh, if you, if it's in the fifties, uh, it it could uh, it could uh, have run or tunneling. Uh, you could have uh, uh, issues with even uh, even burn. Uh, you can have uh, issues with read lights. Uh, or things of that nature, and if it's on the more favorable spectrum of smoking, spectrum. Uh, yeah, so in the <laughs> sixty to seventy range, uh, then you should you should have an enjoyable, uh, uh, t- you know, be able to you know 
if you're a little bit more seasoned cigar smoker, you'll be able to really hone out those those notes and uh, aromas and aromas. things of that nature. Now, so I mean, okay, stop for a second. Hold the thought. Yeah. <laughs> if I I gotta let you know what's going on inside my brain. I'm sitting in studio, and I get to see your face of you describing Andrew and Andy's face. And Andy, it's the same face you had on when we were just about to start the interview. What the hell am I getting into? <laughs> what, is, what is this? What is, what is this? It's called a cigar medic, and and a and, cigar and, medic. and and you you it's got two prongs. You stick it in the foot, right? And it gives yeah, it's like you a prostate exam. For it, a right, that's what, <laughs> dude. I, I was like, I, I'm I'm looking at my comment, and I just put, oh boy, I can't wait for this commentary. Like, I just can't wait. <laughs> so, so you stick it in the foot of the cigar. Now, Andy, t- talk talk to me about this, right? You're about to light up a cigar. Wherever you are, we can create a visual if you want to. <laughs> and you pull out this gadget. That's probably yeah, how big. How big is this gadget? It's like oh, by, this rig. Like, it's, like it's, two two inches, like a couple of inches. Oh, okay. It's like, about as big as two inches. about that long. Yeah, and then you stick it into the, the – it's got two little prongs, and you stick it in, and it goes dee, 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 like you're taking your freaking COVID It beeps at you? Does no, it, beep? it doesn't beep oh. at you. It doesn't beep at you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Andy, I'm very no. visual. I'm very – because you got to remember, Stogie Geeks, right, <laughs> 60% of the Stogie Geeks listener listens to this on, on audio. Which I'm like, really? This is available on video. But then again, I kind of look at me and Drew all day, and I'm kind of like, ah, I can listen, I can see where you go into the audio. But anyway, right? Yeah. So I mean, 60% yeah. of the story geeks listening to the audience listens on there. So I, so I'm, I'm very visual. But anyway, so story geeks, we're sticking this thing in the foot. Now, Andy, you go to a brick and mortar, right? You're in the brick and mortar. Hey, I'm Andy. How you doing? Nice to meet you. And you pull out this meter, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and you stick it in the foot, and it gives you a number. Now, here, this is a true question. If the number's 50 from what Drew said, you're not going to get the aromas. Or what was the other thing besides aromas? It'll burn funny, canoe. Sure. Funnel, yeah. Right? Yeah. You're not going to get the, the experience. Now, are you going to put that cigar back? Oh, you yeah, still... like what do you what do you, what do, you do if, if you can't give it back to him? Right, it's it, it's like it, you know, oh, this one's not ready yet. It's kind of it, I'm waiting for I'm waiting. You know how people finger you know finger fuck and all that other stuff, cigars and humidors. I'm waiting yeah. to see some guy in a humidor just sticking this thing <laughs> and all the cigars that are on the shelf. <laughs> but what do you like, like Andy? Like, like I'm like Drew. What? How did you even come across this thing? Oh, story geek, listen, listen. I texted, I emailed it to me, and this... I probably would experiment with it. I'm like, oh, fifty. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, that's what yeah, I would do. exactly. Well, and that's Drew, what Drew decided what to stick his sticks. He was lost for like two hours in his humidor at home, <laughs> sticking things. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. dude, my, like my first, like my first, <laughs> my first thing was like, dude, you had the time for that? Like, bro, like you need, you need to freaking get, you know, you need to find a hobby or something, right? Like, you know, <laughs> no. in COVID times, but, but true. Like, so yeah. my question is Drew, Have you ever stuck a cigar and it wasn't optimal? Well, uh, no, I mean, cause in my, in, in my humidor at home, it, has, got- a, it has a number. Yeah, it hasn't. Yeah, well, one, it's like, I, I, it has. Well, it. I know what cigar boxes where where I'm at, and what the ones I'm aging, ones that I want to let sit for a while, and then the other ones that are ready to go, and then the ones that are just about ready to go. And so I, I already kind of know where they're at, you know, in my head. But I just wanted to take this device and just check it out and see if it was true. So yeah, I I, I took a cigar from my, you know, that that's just resting right now, uh, aging. I grabbed it. It was like a 50, like 53 is what it came out to be oh, once boy. I let it sit. I took it because I, I wanted to see if it was true. <laughs> right, right. Um, right. It was partly true, but it wasn't all the way, you know. I mean, but again, these are just suggestions, I think, on cool. the back of this card for this product. And I took one I that was it, in the, I think it's all going to depend on the cigar. It really exactly. will. Exactly. And that's exactly where my where my uh, my research is taking me. It just depends on the cigar. Uh, de- you know, it depends on the tobacco. And I, I, there's a lot more to this that I didn't think. I don't think they. I think what they did when they developed this product, or that they're still getting a pan- patent pending on it. Uh, the uh, it's just more of a 
something to do while you're bored, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. So it, yeah, I mean, sounds like, it sounds like it was like on Shark Tank or something. So back, yeah. m- maybe. So so back to Andy. So you stick the cigar. You, you, you're at your brick and mortar, right? You're at your brick and mortar. You stick the cigar. It's well, 50. I wouldn't do that there. What yeah, do you do, do, Andy? It's what? Say it's that again. It's 50. 50. It's, it, it's below optimal level. Like what? Yeah, RH is 50. Like what are you going to do, dude? Me, me personally, I'm going to smoke it and see what the hell it's trying to tell me would the yeah. 50 uh, sit in your head like would the fi- I, like shit I, am i not getting uh, the exact flavor that it needs to be <laughs> do you need to calibrate this thing too like, <laughs> yeah, that's a great no, question no, andy no, you, 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 mean, like, you know <laughs> it does have a cap that you'll never lose because they put a little tether string to it oh dude so. i would lose that shit dude. <laughs> oh yeah because yeah. that works at cigar shops when they do that with Cutters and lighters. Oh, that. you mean yeah. it's like a bank? This is my classic. You go to you go to the humidor, all right? You go to a, a the humidor is the name of the shop. It's not like that. Trust me, folks. I'm sorry. Right, right. You go to a cigar shop, and the lighter and cutter are like on a chain, like a fucking yeah. bank, like a <laughs> bank. They're on a bank. It's like, dude, like it's it's a freaking what the hell is this thing? This thing's a freaking uh, vertigo. The twenty one dollars <laughs> yeah. for three on Amazon. You know what I mean? And like they have a chain. It's not like you have the freaking <laughs> ST pain DuPont. Pain in the ass too when it breaks. Right. You got to re- refix it. It's not like you have yeah. an ST Re-chain DuPont. It. Like if if I were a shop owner and everyone was lighting from an ST DuPont, I might consider putting on a chain. You know, they make thirteen thousand dollars. I wouldn't. I wouldn't let my guys <laughs> use an ST DuPont. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's like they they all treat it like it's like freaking dude. It's so funny, man. Oh. I- I will say this as a as a PSA to everybody: Do not take the cigar medic into your cigar uh, brick and mortar and and start sticking cigars. Because oh, if no. I see you do that, I, I would I would say I'm please gonna do go. That. I'm going to get one and go straight to pres- prestige and do that. I want to encourage. <laughs> actually, actually, Drew, I, I want to encourage the story geek listener. If you have a cigar medic, go to the uh, brick and mortar and stick it in and. <laughs> And 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 give me the number. Stick it in. Stick yeah. it in. Stick it Take in and give me the number, Joe H. Story. Because I can picture someone sticking it in, right? Saying, "Excuse me, sir, I just got the cigar from your humidor, and this is the optimal." Like, dude, like, dude, I, I just, I just see all sorts of trouble with with this with this thing, even from a personal level. Now, full disclosure, you're talking to someone who walks around with cigars in a baggie. Like, I don't have a travel yeah. humidor. I don't have a freaking herfador. I don't have a thing there. Like, I, I just walk around with cigars in a baggie. I smoke them. These are the next ones that I have to try for story geeks or whatever. And yeah. honestly, half of them I give out when I'm at shops. I'm like, yeah, tell me. Tell me how you think of it. If you think I should smoke it, like, pe- like people I trust. Because a couple of them like, dude. You can't smoke this stick. Like you will nuke this thing on the show. Like this thing is terrible. I'm like, oh great, thanks. You just saved me forty five minutes to a friggin' you you just saved Drew an hour rant. Cause if I really hate yeah. a cigar, the review gets longer, Andy, just so you know. You know, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and if I like him, I'm like, yeah, it's great, try him. Like that's <laughs> like you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, so uh I just I, I when Drew when you sent me this thing, I, I thought it was classic. All right. Yeah. I can't well, wait know. for you to hand out a cigar for someone else to try, and sure enough, they pull a cigar medic out of their pocket and check it in front. Dude, of you. Uh, I can't wait for that. I can't. You got to document that one. It, it's probably got. It's probably got. They probably got like it on, like clipped onto their belt with their cell phone. Oh yeah, and, and it's yeah. like all. Yeah, like, you can buy a case for it. You can buy a case for There's this a bad case? boy. Of course you can. Yes, buy. they got a case for it. They got a case for it. They got. Uh... You call, of course you can. I walk around. I walk around with my cell phone, right, with no case. <laughs> right like no case like like it is my goal to keep this thing until it doesn't like you know work or whatever we get one i don't know every two years or whatever it's my goal not to break it but people they protect it like like it's the freaking mojave like you know what i mean like oh my god this is my cell phone case and you know i just <laughs> i walk around it's liberating story geeks i want to encourage you if you take your cell phone case off your phone it's liberating man it's you know <laughs> things that happened during COVID nineteen. This is how this is how things transit. That's just why that and that's how I ended up getting the cigar medic because I was like, you know, I got some time. Let me go try this thing out. Let me just order it. 
and and what have you. But you know what? I, <laughs> my final verdict on this, and yes. I told everybody I would give you a verdict on this. I'm going to say this is more of a novelty product for those who are not really uh, seasoned cigar smokers. I mean, if you're, I mean, but, but like I said, don't dare walk into prestige. Uh, tobacco out and start sticking my cigars i will kick you uh out <laughs> so Yeeks, i will i encourage you to walk into prestige cigars and stick <laughs> the cigar and if it's under 50 drew's gonna pay for it that's a oh, promotion no. yeah. that's a promotion <laughs> yeah All right you walk into prestige cigars if you need the exact address i will give it to you email you me. stick it All right <laughs> You, you stick it, you buy it. You know. Yeah, like but what if it's it, fifty? It's no good. It. I can't smoke. Well, this is you not know, optimal. you got to age it. Then I'll sell them. A, then the, uh, I'll sell them a humidor so they can age it. There you go. I'll, True. I'll give you. I'll give you. Can you poke a lancero with it? Or the, is it too great wide? question. No. Do you use one poker? Because because there's a <laughs> so separation. It's two, two pokes. Yeah, it's two pokes. Like is, is there? Okay, like, so that's a great so question, I, Andy. Okay, so during this endeavor of my weekend where I was bored, uh, I did try to poke a Lancero, and it did not work. So then I put one of the probes in the Lancero, and it did not work. So I even – even the torpedoes, you know, the – so I got a torpedo, and I was like, well, it's got a real small tip. So what I did is I slid the two prongs through the uh, tobacco leaf onto the a larger part of the uh, foot. <laughs> and just and just try to do that to see if it would get a good rate. This is too much, this is too much work. Right. Yeah, it was, I would just you know again. Uh, this is just research, and I was just like, okay, I had some time, so here we go. And uh, yeah, it, it just doesn't work that. Yeah, it's better just for the uh, the regular cigars with the old regular foot that you can. Yeah. So was it twenty bucks well spent, Drew? Twenty nine ninety five. Okay, thirty uh, bucks well spent. It sounds like you know, something like, I would use once and then forget about. That's pretty much what it is. That's why it's sitting in my yeah. truck. It's sitting over there because one day I may have to throw it at some, you know, NASCAR driver here in Texas. <laughs> I, I carry items that I want to throw in my glove box at people that, you know, really want to get stupid on the highway. So that's fair. Um, yeah. Drew, so, do you have any more gadgets you want to discuss? <laughs> no, I got I, no, not 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 cigar related. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I I uh, uh, so is so you spent thirty bucks on this thing. It's a novelty item. For me, it's a novelty item. For other people, they may use it, uh, uh, you know, if they're new to cigars and they really want to try to keep their, um, you know, uh, I don't want to say low-budget humidor, but uh, and just kind of see, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 more of a novelty product I mean, for me. A hydrometer would work well for me. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go one up. Stoy Geeks listener, if you have a cigar medic and you use the McAuliffe Passport, you have to include in your notes what the reading was on the before cigar you smoked medic it, yes. before you yeah. smoked it. So bonus and, 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 and if you do, Andy will send you a piece of swag. <laughs> right? Yes. It, right? If so, yes. if you're using the cigar medic out there and you're going to use the McAuliffe passport, make sure you stick it with the two prongs. And and make sure you say my cigar medic reading was sixty four thirty eight whatever the number is, and then life will be good. And then when Andy is validating your critique of the cigar, he can now yeah. know if it was truly humidified, even though it wouldn't be get, Andy's fault if yes, it wasn't. Yes, <laughs> and you get two you get two pieces of swag if you do this at Prestige Cigar. Nice, <laughs> oh, that's nice. See that? Yes, uh, yes, yes. You know, I'm gonna say that passport. I, I, I mean, that's a great idea, isn't it? I, I love it. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. I've already got some, uh, some thought process about ex expanding that uh, passport. Uh, you know, but yeah, uh, because I have a barbecue passport, I have a bourbon passport, and now. I'm going to get me one of these McAuliffe How, how does a Stogie Geek pass. listener get uh, uh, a McAuliffe passport, Andy? So I would ask your local brick and mortar okay. uh, if you uh, if they have them. What we've been doing is we've been shipping them with orders, a uh, good mm -hmm. stack of them, depending on the size of the order, to your brick and mortar so you can get it there. Or you will get one. We actually have available through our Ultimate Inventory Partners a passport sampler pack. And what that mm -hmm. is, is it's one of each of the 15 blends that are available today in a sampler pack, and we'll ship it straight to your door. That is going to come with a passport and some other like cool things that we have 
uh, to offer like stickers and stuff that'll be in there. So you can get one of those by reaching out to one of our ultimate inventory partners. You can find that list on our website, or if you're an ambassador, it is on the Facebook page under the announcements tab. Uh, we mm -hmm. have 30 different retailers out there that are in ultimate inventory partners. Uh, they'd be happy to, uh, to take, uh, take your phone call and send you one. So uh, that's the easiest way to get a passport and all the cigars in the passport. Uh, that way you can smoke through the line uh, and have fun with it. Embark on the journey. There you go. Can I can I plug can I plug you can I plug something for you, Andy? So if you go to Macau Cigars uh, and you hit the passport deal, uh, the page, uh, the journey. There's you can also download it. So oh, I didn't, easy. I didn't, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. You can also download yeah, hit, it and print it out yeah, and you do can, it yourself at home. Yeah, you can make it look nice, and yeah, it's digital, and then and then you can print it out for for your record keeping. But yeah, this is yeah, it's pretty awesome. I I like this passport idea. I'm, Remember, stow your geeks, go to Prestige and poke the cigars, <laughs> and you get some swag. So there you go. Poke and smoke. Poke and smoke, poke and smoke over at Prestige. Oh, poke and go. smoke. I like it. There awesome. you go. Awesome, Andy. There don't be a stranger to the Stow Your Geek Show. Thank you for your time. And uh, Joe, thanks it, for having me on. Nah, man, it was a, a pleasure having you. And like I said, I, I truly wish you guys much success. In the short time that you've been in the industry, you guys have certainly been a huge breath of fresh air that I think that the industry needs. So keep doing what you're doing. I think you guys are in a great place. Drew, I want to thank you for your time as well. Stow your geeks, thank you for watching and listening. Remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. All you got to do is go to stowyourgeeks.com. Check us out. Email all your complaints to drew at stowyourgeeks.com. Thank you for watching and listening. Behind every cigar, I want to encourage you that there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and support your brick and mortar. I want to say a special thanks to J.C. Newman Cigars, Havana Cigar Club, Placencia Cigars, and McAuliffe Cigars. I have been your host, Joe Zempa. We'll see you next time. Peace.